Hey guys, so glad you were able to join us. My name is Oliver and I'm passionate about education and self-development. And on this channel we talk about studying and building your early career. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So since you clicked on this video, you're probably either thinking about or already planning moving to Finland to do your studies. An important part of this process is also finding affordable housing. A part that could be tedious and, and time con consuming, but also a process that could actually save you a lot of money if you know what you're doing. So first, let's get this out of the way. A full disclosure, none of the companies or the organizations that I'm going to mention in this video have paid me anything. I'm just merely giving you the best links and resources to actually get started. So also I have to mention that there are regional differences on this topic around Finland. But for, for the sake of this video, I will use the Helsinki capital region as a benchmark to just give you an idea what kind of services are provided. However, for more detailed and, for example, city-specific information, check out the description box down below. I will have a lot of links and resources for you to use. So when looking for a student apartment in Finland, there's something that you actually have to understand first. Finnish student unions and organizations have a very meaningful and a long history in the country. So without going too deep into that topic, what you have to know is that the Finnish student unions and organizations have been and still are some of the most active in the whole world. This means that most of the larger student unions have actually been able to either buy or even build their own student apartments close to their, uh, to their respective universities. To simplify, this means that most of the student apartment market in Finland is actually dominated by these unions and organizations. So there are a couple of really cool things about this. So first of all, since these apartments are actually owned by the students themselves, um, they are only rented for those students of that specific uh, university or, for example, a faculty. This again means that you should always have affordable housing options beyond the private market, no matter what or where you study in Finland. They are able to keep the levels of rent really, really low compared to the private market because they don't share the same profit incentives as the companies in the private market. Also, adding on top of that, um, a lot of these apartments are actually either really close or in some cases even inside their respective university campuses. So basically what this all means is that you get good quality, really affordable housing, usually really close to your campuses, no matter where you study in Finland. By now you're all thinking to yourself, Oliver, there has to be private market options, this is a trap. Well, of course there are private market options, but they're always more expensive than the ones that the student unions and organizations can offer you. Anyways, what are the actual housing options? To simplify, taking into account the regional differences, these are the most common four housing options that you might have. Shared apartments, studios or one-room flats depending on where you come from, family apartments, and in some cases something that they call roomy apartments. So a room in a shared apartment is the most common and also the most affordable option that you will get on the market. So take into account these are not those shared flats or rooms that you can see, for example, in the US, where you actually have just one single room with multiple beds. With a shared apartment in Finland, you always rent a private lockable room in a shared apartment. Uh, then usually the bathroom, toilet and the kitchen is shared between one or uh, multiple more people. I've also seen a couple of more modern buildings where the tenants always have a private room plus a bathroom and then the whole floor actually share just a kitchen. So studios are rented for just one person and they usually, usually come with just one room, a bathroom and a kitchen. Um, of course there are studios with more rooms, but take into account that these are actually quite rare and they have a significant price bump to them. Uh, so this would not be the first option that you would be looking for. Also take into consideration that studio apartments are the most sought after and in very high demand all around the country. So if you want one, please apply in time or you will be left out in the queues. Next, family apartments are rented to couples or families with children. Um, these usually come between one to four rooms plus a bathroom and a kitchen. The one major difference to all other apartment types is that just one of the tenants actually needs to be a student. Also, these apartments are rented on something called joint tenant agreement, 
which basically means that you, as a couple or a family, you are together responsible for paying the rent and all the other legalities. So just as an example, me and my girlfriend, we're actually living in a two room family apartment, which is great because we can stay there as long as just one of us is studying full time. So lastly, some of the organizations offer something that they call a roomy apartment. These are actually quite a bit like shared apartments, but the one minor difference is that you can actually influence the choice of your roommates. So for example, you can apply for a roomy apartment, for example, with a sibling or with a good friend. On the contrary, for a shared apartment, you would actually be assigned into a room by the union or the organization uh, and you don't have the choice. Also to note, in a roomy apartment, you all sign a individual uh, tenant agreement for your individual rooms. So for example, if your room, roommate changes, then someone else will come into his or her place and you might be able to actually influence the choice. So these should be the main options that you are looking for when hunting for a student apartment. And of course, the private market has more options, but note that the prices are usually more than double to student apartments depending on the location. Also do know that most uh, student apartments actually come unfurnished, but do check this information out from specific ads um, so that you know if you have to assign some of your budget for secondhand furniture. I know this is already quite a long video, but I have to note some important points about actually searching and applying for an apartment. So first of all, remember to start this search and application process the second you know you're coming to the country. Uh, usually the queues for these student apartments are really, really long. And if you start this process a week or even a month before you know, come to the country, you might easily be left without an apartment. Also reserve enough time for the process itself. You have to apply to multiple apartments at once. Uh, usually uh, single uh, unions or organizations only have a very limited amount of um, apartments to share and you should never put all of your eggs in one basket. Also, also, if and when you're actually offered an apartment, do accept it immediately. Most of the organizations actually give you just a couple of days of time to decide whether to accept or not, after which they will automatically move on to the next person. There is absolutely no guarantee that you will be offered a new apartment in time if you start being picky about it. However, if you are unlucky and you are actually left without a student apartment, there are some temporary options like Airbnb, but do note that these tend to be in the long run even more expensive than uh, options from the private market. So just please apply for the apartments in time. Also a few important things about your rights as a tenant. So for example, in Finland, there are no such things as oral rental agreements. Well, technically yes, but they, there shouldn't be. Always, always, always make sure you have a written rental agreement before you accept anything and especially before you send money to anyone. If not, it will be basically impossible for you to prove anything in the case of an argument. You should also know what kind of rights you have according to the law. I'll have a link to the official sources from the Finnish authorities in the description box down below, so check that out. But as an example, a security deposit by law can be at maximum equal three months of rent. So there are a couple of really important details like this that you should know before signing a rental agreement. So do read the article that I provided you. And finally, if you actually are renting uh, an apartment from the private market, make sure not to send any money to anyone before you have actually signed the rental agreement and you have actually seen the apartment. So this will make sure that you will not be cheated from your money by fraudulent actors. So I made a video about this a couple of years ago and I actually had my friend Kenny explain this in more detail. So this is him two years ago. Actually one thing I want to mention, a real danger in when moving in Finland. Uh, what I noticed because I, I have the contact and I'm the person for hundreds of exchange students so I hear everything. So here's what happens. Uh, you get a housing offer but and they ask you to pay the advance payment to a Western Union bank. Now this is a big big alarm sign. A Finnish renter will never use any kind of payment service. We only use bank accounts and specifically Finnish bank accounts. So if the account is not starting with FI something and it is not a bank account, it is almost certainly a scam. Uh, we had unfortunately during the two years out of 150 we had a total of three cases which is 
uh, very regrettable that I wasn't able to prevent them. All right, so that's it. That's all the basic information you need to start your apartment hunting as a student in Finland. As mentioned, there will be a lot of links and resources in the description box down below, so do feel free to use them to find the information you need. Also, my next upload will be a detailed look into the costs of housing for a student, so do check that out when I get it online. Anyways, that's all for me this time. Thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end. If you are indeed coming to Finland to study, do tell us what and when in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to get more tips and tricks about studying and building your early career, do feel free to subscribe for future content. I will talk to you soon. Bye.